Um, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this PhD support group meeting. This is the Tuesday session of the weekly uh, UKZN Doctoral Academy program. I'm Dr. Lenny Liebenberg, and uh, I thank you for joining us today. Um, to, to anyone new, or just as a reminder, this is a very casual space, it's a supportive space, and we really appreciate interaction uh, amongst participants and presenters. So, so please feel free to uh, pop a question in the, the chat box, raise your hands, use those um, emotive icons, uh, reaction icons. Um, if, if you're feeling a little uh, uncomfortable uh, doing any of those, you are more than welcome to send me a message um, or any of the SSS teams uh, members a message and we'll, we'll gladly read out your comment or, or your question um, anonymously. Um, right, so I guess that's the admin out of the way. Uh, today's session will be hosted by the UK Student Support Services team, the SSS, and we'll be discussing financial literacy. I guess I, I just mentioned it now, I wish that I'd had a discussion, a very frank uh, discussion about financial literacy at the beginning, beginning of my career. Um, apparently it's not too late to start now, so I hope we managed to get this timing right for more than one person me. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, Sue, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christy Greener, and I am a clinical psychologist and student counsellor based here in the College of Health Sciences. And I have the privilege of introducing today's speaker. So today's speaker is none other than my colleague, Ms. Suzanne Stokes. She is an, uh, an educational psychologist registered with the Health Professionals Council of South Africa, holding a master's degree in educational psychology. She is a student counselor working at UKZN in the College of Health Sciences, predominantly on the medical school campus. Suzanne is passionate about student wellness and academic transformation, particularly the factors that underlie student success She's very passionate about student retention and throughput, as well as mental health promotion. Suzanne is an, is an ardent animal lover, both cats and dogs, so she, she doesn't uh, pick sides, unlike me, and is extremely positive, um, exciting, and a pleasure to work with. So over to you, Sue. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Awesome. It is absolutely awesome to be with you guys this afternoon. Um, I also do love fish too. <laughs> so you can just imagine one day when I'm big, when I have my house, I'm going to have definitely have a lot of animals around. So Prof. Lenin reminded us, you know, it's never too late. And it reminded me of a particular saying or a phrase, when is the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago, when is the next best time to plant a tree today? And the same can be applied to financial management fund, um, and establishing those good financial habits. Um, I am tasked today to do a little bit of financial literacy. So this is just a intro section into what you could be expecting of yourself when you're looking at managing your monies, um, your portfolios, and those kinds of things. So just hopping on to my next slide. And if you could answer all of these questions with confidence, then you kind of know you are exactly where you need to be in terms of your financial management, in terms of your financial literacy skills. So if, if money were no object, what would you be doing right now? Did you know, or do you know how much you spent or save? Uh, what is your current net worth? Uh, the 10 most important things that you would like to accomplish. Your borrowing money, is that effectively done? Uh, do you have an emergency fund? Can your family put everything together when you're, when you're no longer with us? Uh, do you have a, appropriate or proper beneficiaries for your insurances and retirement accounts? 
uh, do you, are you aware of the rate of your returns with your investments? If you only had five years to live, what would you change in your life? And if you, and many other questions, if you can answer these with confidence, you're tapping into all the different elements that pertain to financial wellness and literacy. So I hope that in today's session that I get to give you a little bit of insight as to where it begins, what you can keep doing more of, and what you can start considering in change. In, your, in, in terms of your habits. So regardless of what we call money, um, money matters. Money is, imp is important. It's a means to live, to eat, to study, to socialize, to buy things we like. Money management isn't just for those in finances or accounting. It is for everyone. Okay. I'm going to be touching on a little bit of what, what skills is needed for good money management, how to financially, how to stay financially secure, how to uh, plug those everyday spending leads and making good money management decisions. And there is no right time than now to get into this. So let's get into it. Money talks, right? Cash, money, moolah, coinage, bucks, buckaroos, regardless of what it is called, money matters. What words do you use to refer to money? Hop into the chat space, let us know how you refer to money. Too often we tend to leave the management of finances until it's too late. Whether you have a lot of money or very little of it, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is how you manage it, aka spend it, save it, let it grow. Developing these financial management skills in your early years will not only help you avoid financial strains and concerns during your later years, but will set you up for successful planning and saving in the future. If we are later in our years, it is now that matters. So if you feel you struggle with managing your finances, don't worry, most people do. Managing your finances successfully requires a bit of time and commitment but the overall reward is so worth it. This mini conversation today aims to assist you in getting started with this process of managing your finances better by providing you with essential money management skills as well as additional tools to help you going. If you are a guru managing your money, may this presentation be a reminder of where you've started and remind you of those new tools available to do it better. And also your peers can learn something from you. So do share with us in the chat space. Uh, it's something, if you have a, an idea or a strategy that you would like to share, you may, you may share. Um, it is not easy to talk about money. Many emotions come about speaking, uh, when speaking about money. We need to establish a good relationship with money so that we can make the most of what we have and speak about it when times get tough. May today, if it's been difficult to talk about money, be the shift for you in how you live with money, the little or the lots that we may have. So let us know who you are. So who are you? Are you a student? Are you a learner? Are you newly graduated? Are you a lifelong learner? Are you unemployed? Um, single in the prime of your career, retired or married? Let us know in the chat space. Who are you? Who do we have today? When you're defining yourself who you are, you can also consider using words such as, I am someone that has a money goal. Um, I use money to live. I can save. I spend money. I use money to party. Or I have no money. And I do hope that whoever you are, that this presentation will give you a chance to learn something new or perhaps becomes a reminder of what you need to do more of or keep doing, but also to bust those money myths, break those bad money habits, establish healthy habits, and start seeing yourself as someone who knows how and is able to work well with money. We are mindful that no one strategy will work for everyone. Today's session is focused on the financial literacy aspect and encourages you to take that necessary step towards financial freedom, maintaining financial freedom, or share with those around how you made it to be financially free. So who are you? Absolutely. 
So we have a student, a mama planning to um, um, planning for funds, uh, for education, or a lifelong learner. During the session, do share with us your opinions. So you are, after all, the expert of your own life, and you know what works for you and what would work for you. At any time, if anything is uncertain, let's continue this conversation with a financial advisor or any other financial practitioner who may guide you best, being mindful of the dynamic lives that we live. We may need a little bit of input from a professional. Yeah, so thank you so much, everybody, for sharing with us who you are. So if you're a student or grant funded um, or someone with a salary, you may find yourself tempted to spend money on the things that you may never have got it to buy. But go slow. If you play it smart, you avoid all those sorts of money travels that plague many adults. So let's play a little bit of a game. Just responding to the chat, either with A, B, C, or D. And I'm going to be asking just a range of quiz questions. And in each quiz question, I am going to be um, unpacking the meaning behind um, the concept of financial literacy in, in each one of those quiz questions. So let's quickly have a look. How much do you believe a two liter ice cream had cost us in 2006? Is it A? 8 rand 99, B, 18 rand 99, C, 26 99, D, 48 99. And while you think and ponder about your response, A, B, C, or D in the chat space, let's talk about the value of money. There is this food index that reflects the real value of money, more than just um, the exchange rate, but speaks to the cost of living in real rands, pounds, pulas, dollars, the power of our money. If you want to know a little bit more about it, I will share some links with you on the recording um, on, on YouTube so you have these direct links. Money over time loses value. So that 100 Rand that you hid under your mattress is no longer the same 100 Rand 20 years later. According to the inflation calculator, it should be at least 340 Rand right now. Um, however, taking it out of the mattress it's still 100 Rand, it's a third and somewhat less in value. Living expenses change and with every year inflation impacts the value of our money. 100 Rand today will be equivalent to 108 Rand and 5 cents next year based on the impact of inflation rates. So side note, our salaries do not increase incrementally the same as inflation rates. So as much as things get a little more expensive, we our earning power isn't as great. And this is why we need to start early in paying ourselves first, such as setting up savings or funds or investments, making better money decisions. These plans to increase the value of your 100 grand. So let's check on the answer. So we have someone that's saying no idea, maybe C, C, B, B. Okay, let's go and have a look at the answer. Okay, so I have an advert from 2006 on screen. Let's zoom in so we can really see the cost of an ice cream, two liter in 2006, and it was in fact 18.99 B. So here are a few tips to be mindful of. Compare costs and everything, because that ice cream that we're buying now might be 86 rand now, um, compared to, um, you know, at, at the one shop, at another shop, it might be on special at 55 rand. Use coupons and ask for discounts. Fix those bad habits, those bad spending habits. So as much as we would like to have ice cream, um, you know, a particular type of brand, let's compromise or and, and instead of buying ice cream, let's buy something a little healthier. Take advantage of cash back. At the end of every um, quiz, I'm going to be sharing some um, some helpful, mindful money making, money saving, money investing tips. All right, let's do another one. You have just won the lotto. Your friends and family have asked you for a loan. What do you do? A, give them the amount they need. B, give them what they need and charge interest. Or C, Buy what they need instead of giving them the money, or D, 
you don't borrow money. Without interpreting or analyzing uh, the responses, let's have a look, see what is your response. You have just won the lotto, your friends and family have asked for your loan. What do you do? We have a response for C. Buy what they need instead of giving them money. Or we have a B, give them what they need and charge interest. So we have a couple of entrepreneurs in this group. A couple more entrepreneurs in the group. So have clear rules and boundaries when giving money away and stick to them. We know money and family are like oil and water. So be aware that when money is a factor in any relationship, consider that when you're parting with your money, it actually ends up being a gift you have given. Money may be a means to everything, but leads to little when there are no friends or family. Thank you so much for your responses. So here are a few money tips to be mindful of. Maintain an emergency fund, set financial goals, save for the unexpected, save for retirement, learn to want and buy less and educate yourself on finances. Um, let's hop on to the next poll. Why do you spend money? A, to make money. B, to build an image. C, to fill a void or a sense of emptiness. D, because there is nothing else to do with it. Why do you spend money? I think it is important to also understand your relationship with money. Knowing why you would use the money. To be clear about why you spend money is a part of your plan. Have you saved for it? Know how to set these money goals for the items you need. We now know that money has value. And we realize it is expensive to live as we grow in older. So be clear and honest with yourself about your money habits. So why do you spend money? So we know with the previous question, <laughs> that the lighter question definitely has um, you know, quite a big role in keeping quiet about the winnings. Okay, so we have an A to make money. Okay, someone loves clothes. So either to build an image, uh, e to eat. Okay, since eating eventually translates in me making money, allows you to be more productive. We have C to fill a void. To know your relationship with money and why you use money. So here are a few more tips. Spend less than you earn. Keep looking for new earning opportunities. At times, it may be something as simple as house sitting, pet sitting, <laughs> making and selling crafts online, painting. Grow and invest your money. Continuously pay down debt. Pay yourself first. Shop with a plan. And we've definitely seen that in the previous quiz. Shopping mindlessly leads to overspending and indulging in impulsive buys. So planning ahead, especially with, when, with grocery shopping, it helps you to stick buying, to buying what you actually need and avoid wasting money. Make a shopping list, stick to it, and try to get in and out of the store as fast as possible. So when you start doing the window shopping, at the, walking past the clothes section, then you kind of know you kind of give in. Um, I always say, you know, create a meal plan so you know what is in your cupboard, what kind of items you still need to, to make those meals possible. And you actually end up saving money in the long run. Let's hop on to the next quiz. The next quiz question reads, what does good credit allow you to do? A, allows you to take out a loan for that big purchase, like a car and a house. B, make friends with the mafia. Or C, have the fanciest gadgets, doodahs, and thingy-majigs. So what does good credit allow you to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some trick questions in these quizzes. Okay. 
So good money decisions allow you to purchase those things that we don't normally have cash to buy. So make sure you use the money uh, good credit offers you well and not use it and then you have to make friends with the mafia so that you have to pay back your credit card and the mafia. Just as there is good credit, there is bad credit. So we definitely have quite a couple of A's. Uh, so we have quite an insightful um, participants. Okay, so yeah, a few more tips to be mindful of. Budget for those extra expenses, get and stay insured. So avoid using credit to buy things out of pocket. Uh, check financial accounts often. Um, carry only the money or the cards you need pay bills on time or use that automation system such as the schedule payments as opposed to debit orders because you tend to save money uh, that way. Build your credit score. There are a variety of apps out there that can help you out. So, and, and definitely do that for free so you can ascertain your status. There are some apps that allow you to learn new skills and gain insight into what your credit score actually means. Who do you go see if you are in debt trouble? A, your uncle with lots of money. B, a loan shock. C, the bank consolidating debt. B, you've tat a chance. You play the lot, so hoping you get more money to cover the debt. E, your friends. F, you ignore the debt and avoid all phone calls from those you owe money to. Who do you go see if you are in debt trouble? Owing someone money is a big thing. So make sure that you can speak about your money, money challenges, money issues when there's a Zico money. Add to your good money habits, who you should speak to when there are money woes. Some of these responses might seem logical sense, uh, but again, this speaks to your relationship with money. A, C, F, perhaps an old family member. Thank you so much for sharing. So here are a few more tips to be mindful of. All right, review your progress regularly. Know where your money goes. Track your money. Make smart moves to tackle your debt. Do it yourself. Avoid using Uber Eats. Rather do check a 6060 and make it yourself. Perhaps more fun. Learn to cook that Baka Mama's burger. Okay. I am mindful that some services such as car repairs are necessary to pay and should not be done by yourself. However, if changing your light bulbs or your wipers on your car needs to be done, you can do that yourself. So let's interpret that. So the average cost for a standard replacement of bulbs at a dealership, roughly about 250 Rand for the lower model cars. One bulb might cost you 38 Rand and it takes you three minutes, if that, to swap it out. So learn, don't pay for things that you can do. On that note of doing it yourself, invest in yourself. Improving your value and net worth from daily habits like eating well, getting enough sleep to big life steps like finishing your honors, master's, doctoral degrees or switching careers. You should adopt the mindset of always growing and achieving goals that have long term benefits. And learn from financial setbacks. So I do hope that you guys had a little bit of fun and got to explore your relationship with money, the kinds of conversations you can have about money and the things you would need to consider when having a backup plan. So I'm going to speak a little bit about some financial literacy terms during the rest of the presentation, as well as ways in which you can actually do this more effectively and efficiently. What do you understand by the term money management? Is it important? What is budgeting and is that important? And if you know the answer, go share it to, uh, with us in the chat. And as, as you're defining these two concepts of what is money management and budgeting, let's reflect on the fact that money management is important. 
Efficient management of your finances is an essential life skill. Whether you are paying for your own studies, you have a loan, you have a car to pay off, a house to maintain or support in your family. Good financial management skills are not limited to those accounting and financial students, as I've mentioned before, as we will be responsible for managing our own finances as well as that of our families, homes, our businesses, etc. If you get into debt with a credit card, for example, will mom or dad or that old family member bail you out? Are you waiting on that inheritance to save you? What are your family expectations and demands? Can you call anyone if you run out of money? Or is it up to you to figure things out? So we have both are important. They help to ensure that you have enough money to do what you need, want to do. Yeah. And know that uh, money management allows you to decide how you're going to be using your, your monies. A budgeting is a tool that will allow you to manage the, the monies that you receive and know where those monies go. Okay, so let's define this money management. Let's define what it is. Money management is usually that getting started part. It's the first step. It allows you to take charge of your life and your money. So this management that we are speaking about is something that gives you an, an opportunity to, um, sorry, I'm just rereading my slide and I see I've got duplicates. Yeah, it allows you to take charge of your life and your money. The best way to take charge of your money is to have a plan for it. So instead of thinking of money as just something to be spent, think about money as a way that it can work for you. So that is what money management is. It starts with three steps, allowing it to work for you. It allows you to define your financial goals. It encourages you to make plans to reach those goals and to take action until your goals become a reality and document these plans and goals. So if we have to think of what is a budget, it is one of those actions that allow you to reach those goals, to allow that goal to become a reality. So what are financial goals? What goals do you have? And side note, know how to differentiate between those needs and wants. So financial goals, set those goals. Identify your challenges and roadblocks. Um, aspects that will prevent you from reaching those goals so that you can actually plan to overcome them. So know how you're going to address those challenges and roadblocks, set some due dates, develop a healthy relationship with money, develop those decision-making skills, knowing those needs and wants. So plans, these are all the tools you need to get started, making a budget, tracking your spending, saving your receipts, building an emergency fund, using a money calendar uh, by setting up those due dates, habits, develop habits to remain financially secure, establish habits that will allow you to move to that financial freedom and plug everyday spending leaks. It starts today. You have all the tools available to you. There is an app, a ledger, a notebook. Create a plan on how you would like to work with your money and set these in good, healthy habits. Uh, you, you, you need to make that sense of commitment when managing your money. These are all the tools you need to get started. And this is your to-do list and do it, your action. One of the best ways to keep track of your money is to use a spending plan or a budget. Think of a spending plan as your financial map. It tells you exactly how much money you, you have coming in every month, where you spend most of it, and where you might be able to save a few rands. I love the question. Any recommendations for an app to help recognize and plug the everyday leaks? Let's see if you guys are using any apps that you would like to share with us. So financial security and stability is the number one value of South Africans, along with managing academic demands and workplace expectations, mental health, 
finances have been reported to be one of the top three st stresses for all young adults. So explore those financial products, uh, looking at tax-free savings, unit trusts, retirement plans, short-term investment plans. Have a strategy that helps you to review your spending. Gain insights into your savings um, and investments or learn how to. It all starts with that 100 rand that's left under your mattress. Know your one plan and it is your unique plan. And understand, and, and one of the things you can add to preparing the solid financial future is to understand your fellowship and or your NRF um, grants. So do share with us any apps you're using in doing all of these. How are you maintaining, um, you know, um, a, 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 having a grip on, on your financial situation? So stay financially secure. Here are just a few steps that you can take to safeguard your personal and financial information. It, it's so important to safeguard all your banking information, your PIN, your passwords, um, your security codes. Be online savvy. Avoid phishing and spam websites. If it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. If someone tells you you've won thousands of rands in a lotto and you didn't play a lotto, be very wary. Block those numbers, report them to SAPS. Don't leave bills or payments in your dustbin. Destroy these papers into small pieces um, if you don't have a shredder. Review your credit card statements and telephone bills for unauthorized use. Um, if you do su uh, suspect fraud, contact the um, the company immediately. And if you're a victim of identity theft, report the crime to the police immediately. Have a good relationship with your bank. Besides entering the branch, have you visited your bank? Oh, besides entering the, uh, the branch the first time you opened your account, have you since visited them? Um, have, have, do you have a relationship with, with the bank manager? But these are all the things that you need to be mindful of. And I'm going to be addressing plug everyday spending leaks. And then we're going to look at a couple of apps in a mode. Evaluate and review often. Uh, the small purchases add up. We convince ourselves that it is okay. It costs only so much. Our spending leaks are leaks. And we don't get them back. These are our bad habits. Identify your leak and make a conscious decision to do it differently. Buy at the thrift store. You don't always need new. Avoid expensive coffee drinks or items that impact your health. Those bad habits. Pay the high interest debts first. Um, that means rather pay the debt with your extra monies instead of spending it. Make homemade gifts. These are all the things that we can do. There is also um, a SavvySaver.co.za website that you can go and apply for nice coupons uh, that will allow you to save a little bit of money. So if you have any tips on how to make good money decisions, do share it with us in the chat. I see we haven't had anyone speaking to apps they use to manage their monies yet. I do know some banking apps have um, a budget facility. Um, and you know, there are many different types of calculators out there that can help you work out how, how much you would be able to save in a few years. You can make some saving goals on some of our banking apps. Let's see if there's anyone that uses a credit score app. Do share with us in the chat space. Okay, so you got this. You have all that it takes to do this. Make smart choices. You can do anything you want but you can't do everything you want. Decide what's important. When you want to buy something, ask yourself, do I need this? Separate your needs from wants. Resist pressure, be confident and make responsible decisions and choices. Think about what's really important to you and what has lasting value. Be brave enough to say no. Considering needs and wants should help you identify ways to save money and meet your goals. You know where to start, okay? Resist the pressure to keep up with the commandos. Always consider whether you can afford all of these and if you need them. 
you will experience that pressure to buy those brand names, those expensive cars, always consider whether or not you can actually afford them. Make those responsible decisions today. This is where you can start. So this is kind of like how we might make a decision. It does not seem a little uncomfortable, a little busy. Um, but all of this happens in split seconds. So find a strategy that works for you. You can do a pros and cons list when trying to decide what to buy. Go and do some research before purchasing an item. Um, but know that um, it is a process in making a decision, even if it is buying a loaf of bread. Um, do I, I love the um, comparison shop before buying um, and yeah if, if it's something that you you don't need to buy but you can borrow um, that's always an option uh, if you've already bought it don't buy another one okay so food housing clothing are some of our basic necessities to us all so let's explore the ones. In today's modern world, we know that like cell phones and the fancy cars have become a necessity too. However, that latest phone or, or car worth the latest GPS, fingerprint recognition, um, and all those different applications and buttons that you can push may be a want and not necessarily a need. We know clothing is a need, but those labels are maybe just a want. If you don't have that emergency fund or saving plan or investment account, you have debt. We certainly can't allow ourselves to spend our monies on these ones. So try to make a distinction between the two. And remember, you will be able to satisfy your ones once your financial concerns have been addressed. You have a good financial plan and pay yourself first. So be willing to say, no, I can't afford to do that. We may not always have much money or enough of it, and sometimes we may be unwilling to admit it. Your willingness to be honest and live within your means sends a strong message to your family, to your friends, that you are both confident and responsible adults. Learn to take control of your money instead of letting your money take control of you. When you start controlling your money, you'll know that you are really ready to live that life as an adult. I think this is one of those big things are um, those life lessons of how to use our monies uh, more constructively and effectively in our lives. I'm just looking for an app. So a credit score app that I currently use is called Clear Score, as well as within my banking app, I have, um, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's it called? A, um, credit rating on my app and it actually man uh, manages to um, provide me with some tips and ideas on how to make the most of my money. The same with the Clear School app. Um, there are um, some lectures you can actually um, listen to based on your rating. It will also um, indicate where your money is going, what accounts you have. Um, it is a well-regulated app um, with the credit bureau. So um, any changes that, that gets made on there, it, it's usually approved by the credit bureau. So this is just 12 signs that you are good with money. So have this as your checklist. Um, once a month, go through this, see what areas you need to develop and tweak. Um, Money is important, but it's not everything. Good friends, strong values, and work you enjoy counts far more than all the money in the world. Money is only a vehicle to help you get where you want to go. Manage it well. Cut the little expenses that add up. Avoid borrowing money at high interest levels and watch your money grow as you save and invest. This way, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment and your money helps you reach your goal. So with that, I'm going to invite some Q&A, some questions. Let's see if there are any questions that anyone may have that may be remained unanswered in the chat space. Let's see if there's any particular questions that you may have for us. And I just would like to say thank you so much for participating in uh, the quizzes and for um, sharing your, your lived experiences. And I'm just going to put up those questions um, that 
we should feel a little more confident in, in being able to answer. So may this be a guide as to where you can start uh, to um, in your financial, um, in, in your journey to financial freedom. So I just would like to say thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm going to leave, open the floor to any questions that you may have. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sue. That This has been quite an eye-opener for me, uh, so I'm assuming that uh, I'm not alone <laughs> in this room. Um, I guess I have a question about how to manage um, your partner's money or, or the people around you, you know, because they, they might, um, the actions might affect your spending. But absolutely. Yeah, I think that along with money, you're also managing relationship dynamics. And I think um, the same way you would with anything in, in, in the relationship, you would have to apply the same principle, setting those good boundaries, have open communication about certain things. In a relationship, um, you might not tolerate certain things. The same with wastage of money um, allow that um, that partner or the family become aware as to what you will allow what you will not um, tolerate especially when it comes to money issues and keep the conversation going it starts with us um, in in being comfortable to to speak about money making money grow saving money um, I think uh, a lot of us, um, see a generation of wants where there's this instant gratification. I want this car, I want this phone, I want this. And it's kind of like, how do we delay those things because they're not needed right now? They're not appropriate. So um, develop certain habits like money saving habits, um, working towards a financial goal encourages those boundaries that you're hoping to set. Um, I know. For example, um, in, in, in my life, my partner loves microwave popcorn. And I am like, why buy microwave popcorn when you can make popcorn yourself? It's more fun, you know? Um, so it's kind of like, and it's cheaper. Um, and you get more value for your buck. Um, so it's kind of like making those, those changes. <laughs> so, so, of course, I've, I've, I've got lots to ask about this. Um, when I started... Um, uh, as, as a postdoc in, in Durban, um, I wasn't an adult, I guess I didn't feel like an adult yet because I hadn't yet had my first job at almost 30. <laughs> so I guess I had to play catch up. And um, I guess I'd, I'd like to know what you'd uh, recommend to, to students um, in a similar position, you know, you you probably transitioning from your PhD into your first job. You've never had an RA before. Um, you never had to, to maybe be on your own before. Uh, what Absolutely. sort of good, uh, <laughs> what, what good tips can I walk away from regarding that? Absolutely. I think the first thing that I can ever share is go slow. Um, you know, getting that first salary is exciting or having a job, go slow make good decisions about where this money goes and what this money means to you and the relationship you have with money. Um, another, another set of advice is like an RA, um, you know, what does that mean? Um, you know, how do I make that grow? Oh, uh, the tax man gives me some money back because I have an RA. How can I maximize on, on that in future tax, um, you know, submissions? It's kind of knowing how to make your money work, um, using investments so that you have a better return. Um, pay yourself first. So it's investing in yourself. Um, I know that many of us wants to have that fancy car or a car as opposed to using public transport. So using your money for um, assets that don't depreciate. So make better informed decisions as to where your money goes. So invest it in, in things that you has potential for growth. Um, so it might mean rather, you know, use public transport for a little bit longer. You're going to be saving money in the long term. Um, but putting that money aside that you're saving 
into something so that a year from now, you might have a down payment for a deposit on, some, on a car, on a flat that might be in walking distance um, you know, from the work uh, place that you have. I hope that those quick tips are helpful. There's so much more that I can share, but this is the beginning. At any time, should you wish to chat a little bit more, you can connect with us, Student Support Services. Uh, and I see David's got his hand up. Hi, David. Susanna, how are you? Good in yourself. Good, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks. I just want to appreciate this was quite eye-opening and uh, profound. You know, I'm found wanting in so many respects <laughs> in terms of financial management and interest. So I, I just have a quick question, maybe two. So do we have a, a guideline in terms of appropriate allocation of how money should be spent, like taking cognizant of things, key things like uh, saving, investments, and also meeting your day-to-day -day expenses. Do we have like proportions in terms of percentages that you can uh, recommend? And all, my second question will be, do you have books that you think can be ideal for a layman, somebody who just want to start to learn on how to manage money, it is it. Great questions and comments, David. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm trying to recall the percentages from memory. Um, it's been a while since I did a little bit of research in, in terms of how our money should be spent. But I do recall that not more than 20% of your money should be towards debts. Um, but it's so impossible to do that because how much does a house cost? How much does a car cost? So the, the, the um, percentage kind of gets a bit skewed when you start using your monies for things like that. Um, so they kind of turn the tables a little bit where 20% should actually go to savings for emergency funds. They say something like you have to have a um, four to six month salary savings in the uh, as an emergency fund. So that's your target. So if your salary is 20,000 a month, you should have at least six months of 20,000 as your, your um, emergency fund. So that's a, 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 um, 120,000 rand um, as, as a savings. It's, it sounds impossible, but it is doable. It is possible. Um, resources, um, I will definitely put something together in terms of those percentages in a giveaway pack. Um, I'll send that on email. Um, I, I do have a little um, money booklet that I will so share. Uh, there are many resources and books to read out there. And please do share with us what you're currently reading, if anyone's reading anything on finances. But Rich, Mad, uh, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a great place to start. It is one of the um, cutest little books to, um, to start off with in understanding what it means to have money and to use money. And then um, it definitely grows from there. So that's a good book to start. Uh, I'll, I'll put together a, a reading list. It's such a pleasure. So I am mindful of time and um, I'm wondering if there is any last questions. Um, could, could I just add to that also uh, in, um, in the meantime? Um, you were right about the the it is doable. I remember the when I first met with a financial manager um, after getting my first job um, at the university, and he said, "Look, uh, you are pushing thirty. Um, you have to play catch up very quickly, and at least thirty percent of your salary needs to go towards saving for your retirement." I was like, "Oh my goodness! How am I going to eat? How am I going to get to work every day?" You know, um, and I, I wish I knew then um, that there were people I could speak to. <laughs> you know, uh, the financial advisors and and um, the I guess the SSS as well because it throws you into a a spiral of oh what's the point how am I gonna dig myself out of this um one day one day at a time um and you save and slowly eventually <laughs> you get there. 
Yes. So that's not pretty, it's a little bit less than pretty. <laughs> I like what you're saying. It's kind of like um, equipping yourself with a team. Um, and this is where it begins. It's allowing yourself exposure to um, unpack what does financial literacy mean. This is just the start. Um, you might meet people um, like a financial um, manager that will give you ideas and, and packages of what you can consider. You don't always have to go with them. You can shop around. Um, different packages will have different returns. Um, and I think it's also important to know why you're saving. Why are you putting in a 10-year investment plan as opposed to 20 years? Um, I remember I had a 10-year investment plan because I was planning on relocating and I wanted to have really nice new spots. So um, I, th I thought that having the flexi monies would definitely give me a little more freedom. And that is what it allowed me to do. Um, saving that, I think it was 120 rand at that time every month, gave me such a great return that I could really settle well um, once I got that permanent job. It does give us a lot more freedom. And I like what has been said that um, rich dad, poor dad is an easy read and enjoy. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for being so receptive. And, and um, I do hope I've given you a little bit of a five cents to, um, to this. Um, and may your investments grow ever so big. Thank you. Thank you for all the good advice, Sue. Thank you so much. I did, personally, I wish I'd had all of this way back when, you know, in the beginning. Um, but, uh, you know, it, anyone can start today. So thanks for, for everything that you shared with us today. And I, I like what you said right now. <laughs> Yay to your future success, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you again next week, Tuesday at 3.30. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.